What's up guys? Today we're going to check out Avatar The Way of Water on 4K Blu-ray. I'm not going to get into how good or bad the movie is, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the audio and video quality. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 4K 3D, it's got a 4K DI, it's rated PG-13, runtime is 192 minutes, aspect ratio is 185 to 1, and the audio is in Dolby Atmos. Let's jump on over to the Atmos viewer and see how active this mix is. If you don't know what the Atmos viewer is, you can find a link that tells you all about it in this video's description. You can also find all the gear that I use for these movie reviews down there as well. If you saw my Cloud Escape review about this movie, then you already know what to expect because they use the exact same Dolby Atmos lossless mix. If you've got an above average surround sound setup, then you know that this is basically your typical Disney app mouse audio mix. If you just have an okay surround sound setup, then you might think that this is an amazing Atmos extravaganza, but you know what the deal is. Now this sounded pretty much how I heard it at the Dolby Cinemas. I saw it a few times in Atmos, so I took a few notes. I wasn't blown away with a high amount of discrete effects at the theater, and it also translates to the home mix as well. Taking a look at the Atmos viewer, yes the surrounds get a lot of usage but it's mostly musical extension and some extended light ambiance. The most impressive parts I felt were the forest scenes or anytime there was rain. The water hitting the leaves in different speakers and the natural outdoor sounds really expanded the soundstage outwards in a full bubble of sound. Unfortunately, for about 98% of the runtime, your speakers are locked in a static 7.4 layout. Being a Disney mix, it's not that much of a surprise. Although there are a handful of times you get some dynamic movement that passes through not only your wide channels, but your center surround. The ship landing at 22 minutes in, you'll hear debris floating through the air. At 25 minutes in, there's a chopper landing with swirling effects. And at 2 hours 14, there's some underwater effects that move through all your channels. There's a handful of other light effects, but like I said, it's mostly a static mix. And I did have to turn up the volume a few dB to get it up to the same level as most other mixes out there. So yeah, it's a typical Disney mix. <laughs> For bass response, it hits really hard during the big action scenes. Explosions hit really hard, the ship landings hit pretty hard, and the space whales, when they were talking, also had some beefy weight. I didn't feel anything went ultra low, so this looks to be another mix that limits the low end extension. Dialogue, however, was solid throughout. Now something I normally don't do is juice up the subwoofer when I'm doing these movie reviews, but seeing as most of these releases nowadays lack any meaningful bass, I did boost the low end about 10 dB around 40 Hz on down, so it gives me a bit more kick down low. That said, I still felt the bass was lacking. If you're new to the channel and you're in a home theater and like to know if a movie's worth playing on your surround sound setup, or want to know about the latest and greatest in audio and video gear, then tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. The big news about this 4K disc is that Disney broke their 66 gig rule and actually put Avatar 2 on a 100 gig disc, which means less compression, a cleaner, more stable, more detailed image, which should maximize image performance to get the very best picture possible. And it is a very good looking transfer. Seeing as this movie is mostly CG from start to finish, it does have truly great 4K crispy scenes. Notably, the skin textures on all the Na'vi. I mean, there are shots where they actually look like real blue aliens, or at least people that have painted themselves blue. There are some creatures that don't look quite as real, but still look as if they're existing on that planet. And speaking of Pandora, the trees and grass and all the forest foliage will at times make you think that this is a practical set, even though just about all of it is all digital. As for the HDR, which is not in Dolby Vision, you can only get that on streaming, seems to be a real disappointment for a lot of folks because it isn't eye-searingly bright. But on my TV and projector, the colors look bright and look fantastic. The colors are richly saturated without being garish. The forest and the water scenes look true to life and very natural, and specular highlights can get eye squintingly bright. Black levels look great as well, never crushing detail while enhancing image depth and separation. With that said, the movie, being over 3 hours long, still has to get compressed a great deal. So even though this is on a 100 gig disc, the actual file size is around 88 gigs. And if you were to leave only the video file and the Atmos file, eliminating the other 6 audio tracks and all the menus, you're going to be around 70 gigs or so, even smaller for just talking about the video file by itself. So out of that 100 disc gig capacity, the video itself is only taking up around 60% of the disc. 
I only mention this because comparing the 4K Blu-ray to the 102GB Kaleidoscape version, which is substantially bigger, the Kaleidoscape version does look cleaner and more refined. There are some shots in the movie where it looks as if they've added some digital grain, either to make it feel more filmic or to soften the digital edginess or maybe just a combo of both. So on the 4K disc, you can kind of see the grainy texture, whereas on the Kaleidoscape, it's clearly there. The 4K disc looks soft in comparison. Cladoscape also remains consistently clean and crisp throughout, where the disc can sometimes look nearly as detailed as Cladoscape and on other scenes look noticeably more compressed, meaning it's softer. If they would have split this up between two discs, then it would be a much better presentation. I should also mention that neither the Cladoscape or the disc has high frame rate. It's 24 frames per second on both. With that out of the way, it's still a fantastic looking transfer. It's detailed, has great looking HDR, and is the number three movie of all time. But knowing how good this looked at the theater and on the Kaleidoscape, and knowing that this could have been better looking, I'd have to give it a 9.6. For audio, like I said earlier, this sounded the same as in the theater, which I felt was kind of average sounding. There's still some good spatial detail and a spacious soundstage, but I felt that there could have been more distinct directional effects rather than just having extended ambiance and music. The bass was decent, but nothing I felt was crazy, and you will have to bump up that volume. I was hoping for a knockout outmost mix, but I thought that it was just good. I'm gonna go with an 8.1. So what are your thoughts on Avatar The Way of Water on 4K Blu-ray? Are you happy they kept it on a single disc or would you have preferred them splitting it between two? Leave a comment and let me know. Now, if you wanna pick up this movie, I will leave some links for it down below in this video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media and if you'd like to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop our Patreon page. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again in the next video.